and back I am now. Um, yes, good thing that this is going to be the first try, and now at least it's easy in focus. Um, and you can also see the rest of the mess that is my office right now. So I guess, yeah, this will take a little bit of getting used to. Um, so, whiteboard and the whiteboarding of my insulin reminder solution. Um, yeah, so you have me extremely confused about what they what day it is, whatever am I going to do, um, and whether I took my insulin. Because it turns out you need to take your insulin in the morning, um, once a day, no more than once a day, um, possibly less than one a day. It, it, it would, less than one a day is better than more than one a day for the long-term insulin. And so I need to know whether I did take my insulin or not before I take my insulin again. Solutions. Um, or other problems. I wanted to have something that wouldn't require me to do a secondary action like go on the phone and create an event or work on a spreadsheet and track an event. A, because I don't always take the phone with me when I go to the bathroom to take my insulin. B, uh, because it's very easy to forget even if I did take the phone with me after I took my insulin, but I needed to do the one action. So, cell phone. No. Um, my preferred solution would have been a way to that correlates directly with the action, which effectively will be I had a wastebasket. And the sensor. But unfortunately I don't have any idea how to do that. Uh, Let's ignore that as well. There are, as I found out afterwards, caps for the insulin that have a timer sensor so that you open it for more than eight seconds. It takes more than eight seconds to change, to do to, to your insulin injection. Um, then it will count that you took the insulin and tell you when you last did that. Um, they don't last forever, they last only for a year. There's slightly clunkier to use, and they're mostly designed for the short acting insulin. That's why they have the um, timer since you last took insulin. Indeed, my fast acting insulin pens, well, also my old normal insulin pen, have a timer on the dial that dials in how much insulin to get. So the pen caps. Oh. Um, I settled on a flip button. So the flip button, it's a very simple device, thanks to Luke for suggesting it to me before, um, which can be pressed and an action can be taken. Um, to be precise, what's going on with that one is that I have a flip button. Connected to a um, flip bridge. I'm going to draw it as an actual bridge because I don't know how to draw a bridge otherwise. Um, which then does something. Uh, it can connect to the cloud or it can stay local. Um, I looked at what will be the option with Flick with a bridge. Um, and one of the options was, well, first thing was, can I actually reach the bridge from the bathroom? Because the bridge is here in the office and the bathroom is in the other bedroom. Um, the answer is yes, it's Bluetooth 4. It goes through the two walls just fine. Not an issue. Okay, that's good. Um, what will I do with the cloud, with the bridge? Uh, well, my first idea was I can track it in a spreadsheet or on the calendar. It turns out that IFTTT already had integration. Well, the bridge has integration with IFTTT, if this and that. Um, and if this and that has integration with Google Calendar. So this originally just sent the thing on a calendar and created a calendar event every time I clicked it. So in the morning, I could go, yeah, it took my insulin, click, calendar. 
if I'm wondering if, whether I did take my insulin, I can go and check on the calendar. Better, uh, much better than not knowing if I took my insulin or not. Not good um, in the sense that it doesn't tell me, uh, it allowed me to check if I took my insulin, but if I'm that totally sure that I took my insulin and instead I forgot, unless I go and open the calendar and notice, yeah, that's unlikely, particularly because I don't usually check my calendar during the day, particularly during the uh, lockdown when I'm not going anywhere and nothing is happening, unless I'm like waiting for a delivery from the supermarket. But that usually happens late in the afternoon. And if by late in the afternoon, I figure out, oh, I didn't take my insulin this morning. <sighs> Too bad it's late. It should be every morning. So if it's not in the morning, I cannot do it at five in the afternoon. It just means I need to use more fast-acting fast insulin. And that's not great either. Um, so what I wanted was something. So I'm a huge something on the bridge, but then can tell me yes or no. How? Um, yeah, that was the whole complication. I could use some cloud service, maybe. Um, I could probably use an app on my phone. I could probably write an app for my phone. Yeah, no, honestly, I needed something that was more practical. And particularly given that this was happening during lockdown, with me just having a lot of spare time, but not a lot of supplies, was can I do something with stuff I already have at home? And that's when I remembered, oh, I have an Adafruit feather. Um, and how do you do that? Well, an Adafruit feather has a nail pixel. And a nail pixel can be used to signify colors. So let's say this is. My feather. Well, the feather can tell me yes or no by color. Um, I can choose the color, it's not a big deal. And from the flick to a feather, you could theoretically just run a server on the feather and on the single on the, if I have the button click on the feather. It's a bit clunky and junky because the feather doesn't have state. You it resets from time to time. It can lose connection. Um, it can just be disconnected. And I need to make sure this happens all the time. Just If it goes and loses all the state and tells me the wrong information, I'm back to square one. I don't know if it took my insulin or not, but it's not good. Okay, so no direct connection to a feather. Uh, and it's something to maintain state. But the feather has an HTTP client. And the bridge has an HTTP client. And I have a bunch of computers that stay on all the time at home. And they can run Flask. Anything really. Flask is just what they more used to. Okay, so I can use Flask and just have HTTP, HTTP post uh, because it should be a post from the bridge and then HTTP get from the feather. And that's literally what I started with, like the easiest of the easiest. You just get a web app with two URLs, the bridge is one, the feather is the other. Um, and what it gets back, because it does get stuff back. Uh, this one doesn't say anything. Like, Flask has a real-time clock. It knows when it got posted. So it doesn't really need to know anything from the bridge. The bridge just needs to know which URL to send the post to. Um, sure, it could authenticate it, but honestly, it turns locally. It's only 192 address. So do I care? No, not really. Um, can anybody else find the right URL to post if they XSS me? Maybe the likeliness of that, fairly low. Also, you will have to know the port. It's just a secret URL, so this one has secret 
out. And this one receives back an LED color and a refresh time. The reason for the refresh time is that it's pointless for it to, not, to, to keep asking every 30 seconds, two minutes, one minute, um, whether the, the, um, the, the color changed. Particularly if it needs to go from no, from yes, I, you've taken your insulin to no, you haven't taken your insulin. Um, because if I took my insulin, well, until the next day, the state is not going to change. I still want to be able to change it just in case, like not try every six hours because it can get stuck and things may not refresh. Um, but I was like, I can probably check once an hour after it turned into the state of, yes, I did take my insulin. But beyond, on the other side, if I just went to take my insulin, I need sort of thing to change close to immediately. So every 30 seconds will do, will do fine. So it gets an LED color and the refresh rate. And then the feather has, let's say, the neopixel, the neopixel set the LED and everything is fine. Um, hold but thought. The feather has two LEDs in addition to the neopixel on it. Um, and they are one for the charging circuit and on the feather M4 at least, it just keeps blinking because the charging circuit, if you don't have a LiPo battery, because the charging circuit keeps just spinning um, and flashes. The other one is connected to D13. And here's where things get a little different. Um, D13 is a line on the feather and it allows you to control the LED so you can decide whether to blink it, to keep it on, to keep it off. But I need a feather with an airlift. And the airlift the airlift is a coprocessor. It's an ESP32 board, um, but essentially just provides offloaded. Wi-Fi, TCP, HTTP interfaces. So it's not the feather actually running the HTTP get. The feather just says, ask the coprocessor to fetch this URL and give back the URL, which works great. But the ESP uses blind D13 as chip select. So if you have an airlift connected to a feather, the red LED for D13 is always on. That wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't that the most obvious way to represent the, no, you didn't get your insulin, is turn the LED red. Uh, but now there are two red LEDs. So it's evening. The feather is somewhere where I can see it. It's red. Is it red because I didn't take my insulin, or am I just noticing the D13 red and not the other one? Confusing, risky, not something that I wanted to do. All of these worked fine. So what's the next? Well, I need to be able to change an LED color. I have a flask up that keep the fade. I know that the feather can do all of this. I did try to desolder the LEDs, but I tried with a um, solder iron, and the answer was I broke everything. And that's where the ticket started. Um, so the, this is the by Pikachu, because uh, I'm very good at drawing. Pikachu, um, on Amazon, or rather on AliExpress, but of course Amazon sells them, or eBay, or wherever you prefer to buy these kind of things, they sell very easy novelty um, plexiglass um, lamps that have essentially a plexiglass shape and usually a strip of LEDs underneath to turn it on. And Depending on which one you get, you might get the ones that have slow or fast or, um, changing LEDs that just change color by themselves, or you can get those that have controllable LEDs. The one I ordered ended up in a six RGB LED in parallel, 
um, so we have for made it all free because it doesn't really matter how many of those there are. Um, come on. Well, I'm only going to close. Um, these are RGB LEDs, which is slightly more complicated. So, I'm going to draw them this way. Actually, no. It's going to be horrible to, to see. So let me do it in a different way. I'm going to mark them. And then they go the separate ways. red, green, and blue lines. And they go into an MCU of some kind. Well, that's an easy one to handle because, well, I, the feather becomes the MCU. Now, these are controllable over um, PWM post with modulation, typical for RGB LEDs. So you have your neutral state and you do this. And so on. And you change your LED colors. It works essentially the same way as the NeoPixel. The main difference with the NeoPixel is that NeoPixel, you send it the code you want to the color instead of actually managing the PWM. But again, that's all abstracted in the feather, so that's a very easy change to do, particularly because this is Circuit Python, so it's very easy to change with that. That's not the big problem there. What you end up with is a time of day. So that at originally 7 a.m., I think now it's 5 a.m. At 5 a.m., the Pikachu color is red, and it stays red up until something here. This is event. Let's call this event. Um, at 5 a.m., the Pikachu color turns red, and then the flash rate is 30 seconds. And then once the flick button is pressed, this starts to yellow. And then the flash rate becomes one hour. And this goes on until 5 a.m. Yeah, it's very junky, it doesn't really do much. Um, the way it works for the 5 a.m. is slightly more complicated um, and probably over complicated. Because essentially it takes current time. And then it takes um, less press time and then it checks time of day more than 5 a.m. then less press time needs to be today in
and otherwise it just checks what you have to do. Um, and I say very junky, not 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 much to say about the code panel. Not, not much to say about this in general, as I say, this was just a very quick whiteboarding session for the quick tie, the whiteboard. Um, so please, please let me know if it was at all visible, and I think I have a few adjustments to do so that this can become more readable first, and second, um, so that we can use this and for work as well, because like, what's the whole point of why I got this one? Not for the streaming, since it's not my kind of thing. Yeah. If it sounded like interesting, I can still throw these kind of ideas around. Um, and this was me trying to describe something I already done, rather than go through the process of designing something anew. Um, I had a couple of ideas of the stuff that I would like to design, and I just do a life about that because I don't have the time to write them in a blog post and then feature it. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Hi, Deep.